homemaker to reach my house to go through this gate. Which needs to be fixed. And here we are. And here's my husband, John. He used to just mope around. Big chief thundercloud. Well, this cranky sort of behavior often spells irregularity due to lack of bulk in the diet. So I got him to try post 40% bran flakes. They're a very gentle, natural way to enjoy the keep regular benefits of bran day after day after day. And they're absolutely delicious. John tried post 40% bran flakes and liked them. And little by little, he began to feel more like his old self again. Now, I don't say post bran flakes have made him turn handsprings. He's no spring chicken, after all. But he does feel better. But just look at him now. Seriously. Post 40% bran flakes are just the thing to help your family feel fit. The tastiest way ever to get that healthy outlook. Well, folks, it's, it's nice to be back. It, it really is. And, and while I'm sure you've been seeing lots of Buicks on the highways this summer, I'd like to show you one on your screen tonight for a very special reason. And here it is, the most exciting, eye-catching example of Buick striking new styling, the panoramic windshield. Even in a year when everything about a Buick is new, this basic change in windshield design still stands as Buick's greatest departure from the past. To appreciate this, folks, Please realize that in the whole history of automobile design, there have been only two other changes in windshields. The first cars had no windshields, you know, so first they put them on as an extra, uh, straight up and down, just like you see right here. Then, about 20 years ago, came the second change, and they introduced slanted windshields like this. You'll notice that on this one, the side pillars or corner posts sloped forward like this, which obviously reduced visibility. Now, they stayed with this design for about, oh, 20 years. And they stayed with this one for about 20 years. And just as the old straight up and down style gave way to the slanting windshield, that's this one over here. Well, this one is going to give away to this one as fast as the rest of the automobile industry can make the change. So take a look at the style of tomorrow which you can get on a Buick today. And what does that mean to you? It means that this 1954 Buick will be in style next year and for years to come. And you can get this styling in the future on this Buick Special, the lowest priced car on the market with a panoramic windshield. In fact, this Buick Special two-door six-passenger sedan is a beautiful buy, a tremendous value for a flock of reasons. There's the brilliant performing brand new V8 engine, there's Buick big car room. There's real luxury-laden comfort in its deep, soft seats. Upholstered, mind you, in nylon. And, of course, this special, like all Buicks, gives you the famed million-dollar ride. Actually, it's a little hard to believe that you can get so much for the low price that you'll find right here. Yes, folks, when you take a look at this tag, be prepared for a pleasant surprise. You'll find the price on this special, and I mean the local delivered price, excluding optional equipment and local taxes, if any, but including delivery to your TV station city, you'll find this price actually lower than some models of the so-called low price. I ask you, friends, with values like these, is it any wonder that Buick moved into third place or that Buick strengthens its new standing each month? But try this Buick yourself. Thrill to its wide-view panoramic windshield. Sample great performance and ask your Buick dealer about the big three-way bonus you get by buying a Buick right now. See him tomorrow. And, and now let's go back to the Century Theater where uh, we'll see what's happening with Milton and his big publicity idea. <laughs>
Admiral. Manufacturer of the world's most powerful television receivers. And maker of a complete line of television combinations. Admiral radios and radio phonographs. Admiral electric ranges with Lexo heat. And the famous Admiral dual temp and conventional refrigerator. Presents Light Owl. Anxiously awaiting the return to the footlights of Carlton Dane, the great actor, after ten years' retirement. The play is Richard III, but the audience will see much more than Shakespeare tonight. So join me now on the edge of your chair for the curtain call. Light out. Carlton Dane, mm. how long has it been? Eight, ten years? Ten years exactly. <laughs> and they said he'd never act again. Oh, no. I thought you knew all about that. He's the greatest living American actor. Mm. They always say after ten years, he's better than ever. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I never saw him. Oh. Who was it? His wife? No. She was an actress, too. Oh? She killed herself. It was all over the papers. Give me another hug. Mind up me wounds. Oh, have mercy. Jesus. Oh. I did the dream. Oh, cruel conscience, how dost thou afflict me? The lights burn blue. It is now dead midnight. Oh, cold, fearful drops stand on my trembling flesh. What? Do I fear myself? There's none else by. No one but me, Carlton. No one but Alex. Richard loves Richard. That is, I am I. Is there a murderer here? Yes, Carl. There's a murderer here. No! Yes. I am. Uh... Then fly. What? From the shelf? Great reason why, lest I revenge. What? Myself upon myself? Yes, Colton. Revenge. My revenge, Colton. Revenge for Alexis. Alas, I love myself. Yes, you've always loved yourself. But there's been murder done. Remember? Your wife's murder, Colton. My murder. Alexis! You're dead! <laughs> you're, you're dead! 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 Good evening, Mr. Garson. Thank heaven you've come, sir. Hello, Williams. Where is he? He's in the study, sir, waiting for you. How is he? Well, I think you'd best judge for yourself, sir. Would you go in, please? Wait a minute. 
Has there been anyone here before me? The press? Any photographer? No one, sir. Miss Lydia left all of us at the Will you go with Carlton? Carlton, where are you? I'm here, Peter. Strange. I was standing on the balcony just now. It seemed but a step to the pavement. Yet it's 18 stories from the street. Carlton, what is it? What? Oh. Oh, thank you, Peter. I knew you'd come. Oh, I came as soon as I could. The usual details in a case like this. Reporters, police, refunds, that opening night crowd. Now tell me, Carlton. What happened tonight? I want to know. Make yourself a drink. You tell me, huh? <laughs> oh, what infamous fabrication did you manufacture for the press, huh? I told them you were ill, of course. A slight heart condition. My cause is heart, if thine has no less reason. Opening night excitement, nerves, tension. Your long delayed return to the stage. Well, don't worry about it, Carlton. It'll all make for a satisfactory press. Yes, a filthy press pot must be fed, eh, Peter? <laughs> I can see the headlines now. Faded star fails in comeback through the drunkenness, uh, loss of memory, and other natural causes. Then, after a week or two of complete rest, we reopen. Stop it! I have had ten years of rest. We play tomorrow night. What is it, Carlton? What happened tonight? I'm sorry, Peter. Twenty years we've been together. Twenty sad and glorious years of theater and triumph. Of tears and heartbreak and madness, too. I couldn't have made it alone. We've met disaster before, Carlton. Much worse than this. Now, what happened to me? I've got to tell you, Peter. I've had it locked up too long. You've been my friend, Peter. You love me, huh? You won't hate me, will you? I've got to tell you. About tonight, yes. yes. Alexis. I saw Alexis. Alexis? But Carlton... I know, no, sounds mad, doesn't it? <laughs> Carlton Dane, the last of the mad Dane. Not the melancholy Dane, Peter. The mad Dane. <laughs> Malcolm Dane, my father. He drowned himself in a torrent of drunkenness and debauchery. Christine Dane, my mother. She was driven to insanity and death. Trying to assemble the fragments of... A distorted mind and heart. Alexis, my wife, the jewel of her generation, the loveliest, the most hauntingly beautiful, the most untalented actress on the American stage. Alexis was a suicide. No, Carl. It was murder done. Remember. Murder called. <laughs> My murder. Help me, help me. Murder, Carlton. My murder. Carlton. Carlton, you're very ill. No. no, 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 I'm all right. It's Alexis. Alexis said I was a murderer. You'll be my friend now. Hey, hey, I'm not a murderer. Oh, no, of course. Carlton, 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 Carlton. are you all right? Oh, of course, Lydia, my child. Quite all right. You said you wanted to be alone until Peter came. Mm. Thank you, Peter, darling, for coming. What would we do without you? Well, you'll have to do without me tomorrow night. Carlton insists that he's well enough to go on. Carlton, do you think you ought? <laughs> do you think I ought? Listen to her, Peter. Our first appearance in New York together. Carlton and Lydia Dane. For the first time in Measure for Measure. Why, they'll eat it up, my dear. You'll be magnificent. Peter, I give you Miss Lydia Dane in the immortal Isabella. Miss Lydia Dane. 
There'll be a star born tomorrow night, Carlton. A beautiful girl. A fresh and brilliant talent. You know, the public rather fancies itself a star maker. But for you, Lydia, the sudden rush to fame. Continue with our lights out story for tonight. Lights on for Admiral. Of all the pictures in your home, which do you look at the most? Moving from room to room, I suppose it's difficult to say. But not in this home. Here the answer is easy. It's the one on their television screen. The big new Admiral 20-inch picture that brings such a full measure of enjoyment to all the family. Here's a picture that's the envy of the engineering world. The one that meets the real test of outstanding performance. It's clear, even close up. Let's go behind the screen to see how Admiral gives you the finest picture in television. First, pictures are sharper because of finer focusing and finer definition. Made possible by Admiral's new Flexomatic Focus Coil, exclusive with Admiral. Second, they're brighter because Admiral's revolutionary new rectangular Dynaray tube gives you the whitest white and blackest blacks ever obtained on a television tube. Third, they're clearer because Admiral's unique high-powered circuits deliver up to 50% more picture detail. Yes, sharper, brighter, clearer. Clearest picture of all in the new Admirals for 1951. And with it all, there's the powerful compact Dynamagic radio unit with triple play phonograph for any size, any speed record. Yet with only one control, so simple even a child can operate it. Ask your Admiral dealer for a free home demonstration of this beautiful three-foot theater. Thanks to Admiral's famous directional rotoscope antenna, there's no installation necessary. Just plug in and play. Your Admiral dealer is offering a liberal trade-in allowance on your old 7, 10, or 12-inch set. See your Admiral dealer and start enjoying big screen television in a 20-inch set made by Admiral, manufacturer of the world's most powerful television receiver. It's been a wonderful party, Carlton. Music, laughter, the coronation of Lydia Day. And as usual, I'm the last to leave. You were wonderful tonight, my dear. You know, if you can forego your wine long enough to say a fun good night to Peter. Hmm? Peter, I thank you for everything. And I knight you, my Prince Tom. Good night, dear. Good night, Carlton. As you are. No, no, don't bother. I know what it is. You should be very proud, Carlton. Tonight, another Dane reached the heights. Mm -hmm. See that she gets a good night's rest. You too. Good night, Carlton. Good night. Good night, William. Good night, sir. Lydia Dane, spawn of the greatest actor of his generation, a morsel of her mother's beauty, but touched with the Dane genius. Oh, I love the world tonight, Carlton. I love the world and the people and theaters and audiences. 
I love audiences, sir. I shake your infant talents, my dear. I watched over you. I developed your adolescent talents. Carlton, uh, I... You wish to say something, my dear? Yes. I was about to call it a night. Suddenly, I'm very tired. Tired? You? <laughs> oh, nonsense. No, 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 no. You'll have some more wine. We have many things to talk over, my dear. You became a star tonight, you know? A night long to remember. The fledgling tried her wings tonight. You heard it, my dear. It was wonderful, wasn't it? Carlton, I'm deadly tired. Oh, they've all had their little say, haven't they? Huh? But we know, we know, don't we, Lydia? Oh, I've heard it a thousand times. Carlton, you were wonderful. Sing, you were magnificent. <laughs> and tonight, tonight you heard it. Dear, my dear Lydia, you were divinely superb. <laughs> you think you were superbly divine, my dear? Hmm? Carlton, you're drunk and tired. But since the curtain's down and we've dropped the pretense of the adoring and loving father-daughter act... Yes, daughter. <laughs> Tonight was mine. You can never take it away from me. No. You're right, you know. I was on my own tonight. I was free tonight, free for the first time. Yes, it was all your bag of tricks, but I earned them. Ah. Oh, how I earned them. They're mine now, Carlton. What did Madame Bernhardt think of me tonight? Was I superbly divine? Hmm? You were perfect to cook. You always are. No, don't be, don't be rude, Lydia. I was perfect, eh? Well, oh, now, please, sit down, sit down. You're tired. Very tired, don't you remember? Sit down! Oh, that's better, don't you think? What do you want, Carl? What? What? What should I, why should I want something? Oh, did I tell you that I liked you? Yes, I liked you very much. I thought, I thought you performed very nicely. Very nicely. Adequate but nice. Now you've said it. Hmm? Are you happy, Carlton? Is that what you want? You remind me of Alexis tonight. Poor dear Alexis. She couldn't act. And is this the same delirious joy you got when you mocked her? Your mother was a fake. But she was beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, yes. They loved her beauty. And you hated it for that, didn't you? Just as you hate me. As you hated anyone who thought you loved. Well, I loved her. Yes, yes, you loved her, but you never knew her. She was stupid and and she was beautiful. That's right. I love my mother. Why? She was cold and hollow and empty. She was beauty without fire. She was kind, generous, and good. <laughs> You're well, right, you know. She was without fire. Your kind of evil fire. She was no gin. But she had warmth and goodness and beauty. I knew. I had greatness and evil. Eh? The good die young, my dear. You know, you, Alexis didn't love me. I loved her. But, oh, I worshipped her. But Alexis didn't love me, so she had to die. Had to die? Yes, just as you have to die, my dear. Mind you, suicide can be quite accidental. Because I was in the car, too, you know. Yes, I know. Yes, but you didn't know that I was driving the car, did you? 
No, no, I didn't. No, no one knew. Everyone thought it was Alexis. But it wasn't. It was me. It was I. <laughs> I knew the car would go off the road. Alexis didn't love me. I lived. But Alexis had to die. No, it's not true. It's not true. Quite true, quite true, my no. dear. Stop it. Stop it. You heard their cheers tonight. They loved you, Lydia. They loved you. They loved you too much, my daughter. I'm the one they really love. Carlton Dane. I'm the one. Everything you did tonight and everything you are is a child of my greatness. Oh. Absolutely mad. I was magnificent tonight. They loved me. You said it, Carlton. You, they loved me. And you killed me for that, didn't you? Just as you killed Alexis. They loved her too much, didn't they? I loved Alexis. But the crowd loved her too. Too much. And so she had to die. So love with the hate, Carlton. No, no. Yes, Carlton, yes. An evil, rotten madness that kills. Yes, I heard this tonight. They cheered for me, Carlton, for me. Not for you, not for you, but me, Lydia. I'm the Lydia. one. I'm the one they really love. You killed my mother. Just as you kill me. No, no. I'll tell him next if I know. I'll be with her. We leave you to die alone, Carlton. All alone. Six weeks, Carlton. You've done nothing but sit here and talk of reopening. As in you, Peter. What does my friend, my manager, my participator in the profits suggest? Forget the theater. For this season, yes. Don't you see, Carlton, it's just not in the cards. First your opening night collapsed, then Lydia... Stop it! Lydia Dane is dead. Carlton Dane, the theater of alive and living. Oh, Peter. Must I sit here night after night alone, waiting? Am I? Am I to die? Carlton, let me for you. Peter, you love me? You're still my friend? Yes, of course. Then you must understand what I said to you that day. Alexis said I was a murderer. Lydia believed her. Now, now Lydia's with her. Carlton, you've got to stop torturing yourself. They'll torture me. They'll come back for me. Carlton. Carlton. I'm all right now, Peter. You must go. Good night, Peter. Whatever you say, Carlton. Huh? Don't bother. I'll let myself out. Oh, uh, about the theater. We'll uh, reopen in two weeks. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Mm. We'll have to find a replacement. There'll uh, be no replacement. But Lydia... No, there'll be no replacement. <laughs> Good night, Peter. Good night, Carl. Yeah. And Peter, would you mind telling William he may go to bed? Thank you. Good night. Mm. 
Nereye? Nereye var ayol? Nereye? I'm here, Carl. He's gone, Lydia. I sent him away. What is it? Why did you come back? I've seen a lipstick, Carlson. Where are you? Lydia, I can't see you. I can't see you. I'm here, Carl. Right here. Oh. Just another step. Another step. Electric is here too. And your audience are of Can't you hear them? Don't you love us, Carlton? Oh, yes. Give me your hand, Lydia. Help me. Just one more step. One more. Well, Carlton Bain has taken his final curtain call. Before an uninvited audience of two, which followed him to the ends of the earth and beyond. And now, before we tell you the exciting Lights Out drama for next week, here is important news of something which you may be needing very much in your own home. No matter how large the family or how small the kitchen, here's the refrigerator that will meet your every need. The new Admiral 11 cubic foot refrigerator, designed with no wasted space. Look, the full width freezer chest holds 60 pounds of food. The full length cold compartment goes clear down to the floor. The deep wide shelves give you more than 20 square feet of shelf area. And the new servidor with handy butter keeper. Simply no wasted space in this new 11 cubic foot Admiral refrigerator for 1951. See it at your Admiral dealers. Join us again on Lights Out next Monday night when your Admiral dealer will present Robert Stack in an unusual Lights Out tale entitled Strange Legacy. Meanwhile, be sure to see Admiral's fast-moving variety show, Stop the Music, over another television network. Consult your newspaper for time and space. This is Ralph Paul bidding you good night for Admiral. We'll be back after a word from our sponsor.
strain. It's by Beethoven, Opus 70, number one. But it has another name, a strange name. Tonight we'll tell you that name and the even stranger story connected with the music. Lights out. It's such lovely music. Don't stop. Well, I can't think of a better reason for stopping. Believe me, you're perfectly welcome, but are you sure you're in the right place? I'm Mark Crane. Have we met? Uh, I have not had the pleasure. Oh, I hope you'll forgive this intrusion. You see, I was passing when I heard the music, and I was drawn to it, so I took the liberty. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> Gentlemen, a compliment. We've been playing together every Friday evening for five years, and this is the first time we've ever attracted an audience unsolicited. May I introduce the members of the ensemble? Miss... Marie Erdodi. Mr. Ben Miller, our cellist. How do you do? And Louis Brock, our pianist, who's also a very fine composer. Oh, you're a composer. Yes. Uh, do you know this Beethoven trio? Are you familiar with it? I have not been able to forget it. It has stayed with me from the first moment I heard it, every part of it. Yes, I feel the same way about it. It has a haunting quality, a feeling of, of another world. Yes. Oh, but I really should not have come in this way without an invitation. Oh, nonsense. Please sit down, Miss Erdota. You're most welcome. It's very nice of you to ask me to stay, but I don't know if I should. Oh, why not? Please stay, Marie. I, I mean, Miss... Uh... You may call me Marie. Well, what happened to the music? Why did you stop? Louis, a friend of yours? Why didn't you tell me she was coming? <laughs> no, Liz. You see, Maria Doty, my wife, Elizabeth. Well, I'm delighted. And so are we. Miss Adoti was passing, the windows were open, the music was pouring out. She loves what? Beethoven, and so here she is. What could be more natural? <laughs> I hope you don't mind. Of course not. Not at all. <laughs> do you live in this neighborhood? No, I live some distance from here. But where do you live? At the Hotel Vienna. Hotel Vienna? Yes, it's a very small place. I don't recall. I... Where is it? It is on the street near the park. Oh, the park? What park? Oh, Mark, what does it matter? Let me take your coat. Oh, no, thank you. Oh, I... Would you like some wine? Yes, good. Oh, good. Get Mark? it. Mark? Louis? Ah, yes, I'd love some wine. Yes. You're so very <clears throat> kind. You make me feel as if I belonged here. And this room, it reminds me. Uh, forgive me, you see, I'm a jeweler, and I couldn't help noticing your necklace. I... I can't remember when I've seen anything so exquisite. Is it an heirloom? Yes, it's been in my family for years. Oh, I see. But, you know, I think I must go... Oh, no, oh, no, please, please, no, please, please stay. We're going to finish the trio. Oh. Then I could not go. Even if I wanted to. Sean, you got it clean. 
I asked John to get things straight for your first visit. It's very simple, as you see, but uh, I have everything I need here. Almost. I've done some of my best work in this place. It's very nice, Louis, but uh, the furniture is so thin it doesn't seem to have any substance. Oh. Oh, but yes, I see what you mean. It's, uh, well, it's the modern touch. I like a little of it in my work, too. It's a magnificent head, isn't it? I've had that bust of Beethoven since I was a student. It's been a sort of inspiration to me, you might say. Not very handsome, I'll admit, but they do say he was an ugly man. I do not think he was ugly. Oh, no, no, of course not. Not inside. No one who wrote the kind of music Beethoven wrote could have been ugly inside. Come, Marie, won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's such a, a fragile chair. It doesn't seem as if it would hold one. It is a throne, Marie. A throne? Yes, Marie, this chair, this room, everything you touch takes on grace. You know that little German restaurant that we were in tonight? Just an ordinary place. But your presence transformed it. Even the waiter was aware of it, Marie, the one you spoke to in German. Aware of what? Why, of you. I saw the way he looked at you. With reverence, as if you were royalty. <laughs> royalty? But, Louis, I thought the people of your country were done with kings and queens. Don't laugh at me, Marie. I'm serious. I've never spoken to any woman like this before in all my life. I'm very flattered, of course, but I would rather you talked about your music. After all, that was why I came. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Something wonderful has happened not only to me, but to my music. I want you to see something. I wrote this last night. It, it, it came to me all at once. I wrote it for you. Well, it's a very great compliment. But I'm afraid I'm not worthy of it. What? Not worthy of it? Oh, darling. Uh, Louis, please, you must not go on. You must not. Have I offended you, Marie? I'm not being disrespectful. I'm speaking from my heart. I love you, Marie. I want to marry you. Oh. No, it's impossible. You don't know what you're saying. I've never known anything more clearly. You, you don't know anything about me. You don't know who I am or the kind of world I come from. I don't care. I don't have to know. Perhaps I'm just a dream, Louis. And when you wake up tomorrow, I will be gone. You will remember me for a little. Just for a little. Don't make fun of me, Marie. You're the only reality that I've ever known. Oh, my poor Louis. It's wrong. I should not. Then you... You will give me some hope, at least. You don't know what you're asking. Or just how much you would be giving up. I know that I would give up my life for you. You would. Oh, here. They'll Thanks. be here soon. They're only ten minutes late. That roast is going to taste like a football, and I wanted everything to be just right for them. Mrs. Crane's matrimonial agency. <laughs> well, Marie is a lovely person. Yes. She's stunning looking, isn't she? Yes. I love the way she wears her hair. I must ask her tonight who does it for her. Well, Liz, it's hardly your style. It was a miracle, the way she walked in here, and the way Lewis responded to her. <laughs> He's always been so shy of women. And he needs a woman. He needs somebody to look after him. No wonder he's half sick all the time, the way he lives. The way he eats. If he eats. I'm afraid I can't see Marie in an apron puttering over a hot stove. As a matter of fact, Liz, I think you've been doing a little wishful thinking about those two. Why? Louis has been seeing her practically every day. What does that mean? Marie's obviously a woman who's used to a lot of attention from men and likes it. She's also a woman of wealth. You know that necklace she was wearing, that filigree thing with diamonds? Yes. Well, I know what it is now. I've been doing a little research. It's an empire piece, 
early 1800s, and it's worth a small fortune. Really? Yes. Now, what can Lewis offer? He hasn't got a penny. Oh, I can't see that that's any obstacle. That's all to the good. Oh. She can be his patron as well as his wife. Oh, Liz, you dreamer. What time is it? It's a quarter after. Don't you think I'd better call her hotel? Oh, you might as well. It is getting on. I'm starved. What's the name of it, the hotel? The uh, Hotel Vienna. Oh, yes. Information? Will you give me the phone number of the Hotel Vienna, please? No, I don't know the street address. Just a minute, Mark, did she give you the street number? No, not that no, I can No, I don't recall. know the street number. What? Are you sure? That's strange. What? There is no Hotel Vienna. Poor Lewis. I feel so sorry for him. He's almost out of his mind. He's, he's tried every hotel in town. Well, maybe she's gone yes. back to Austria. Oh, Lewis thought of that, too. He's tried the airport, the steamship line. Has he tried the police? You know, those jewels she was wearing were certainly tempting. <laughs> you know, I think we're making a mountain out of a molehill. She's probably going to come with him tonight. Oh, if the sky was falling, Ben, you can be sure Elizabeth would make a happy occasion of it. <laughs> there, you see, there's there the door, Ben. You always worry. Oh, how are you? Oh, hello, Lois. Hello, hello Lois. We're all ready. Haven't you heard from us? Oh, Lois, I... I'd like your help. I've been trying to work out a passage here in the Schubert, but I'm stuck. Shall we try it? I'll show you what I mean. No. No, I want to play the Beethoven. Well, why not change the program? Oh, yes. No. I want to play the Beethoven. All right. The Beethoven it is. you an aspirin. No. Mark, will you I'll get, get the aspirin from the medicine right. cabinet? Come over and lie down on the sofa. No, no. I'm all right, Liz. Just let me sit here for a moment. What do you think, Liz? Shall I call Gottwald? No, yes. I don't want the doctor. Lewis, here, take this. Lewis, you're behaving like a baby now. Take it. Come on, Lewis. There. All right? Yes, thanks. I think I'd better get along now. Well, you can't go. You're, you're not well. No, I'm fine, Liz. Oh, Lewis, you don't look fine. Now, why don't you spend the night here where we can take care of you? It's a good idea, Lewis. Why don't you? No, thank you. Thank you both very much. I appreciate it, but I'd really rather get home. I can rest better in my own place. Are you sure, Lewis? Perfectly sure. No, I've got my car outside, Lewis. I can drop you off. Thanks, Ben. I'd rather walk. I'm sorry about interrupting the trio. I suppose it's the first time it's happened in five years. All right, Lewis, don't worry about it. Anyway, you and Ben can always play duets. Oh. Marie! Oh, you come back. Dearest, I thought you'd left me. I shouldn't have come back, Louis. I tried not to, but I had to. I had to come back to say goodbye. Goodbye? Oh, no. No, we've only just met. We're just beginning. I wish it were beginning. What is it, Marie? What are you trying to tell me? Is there somebody else? No. No, nothing so simple as that. Oh, I wish I could make you understand without hurting you. My world is so different from yours, as different as night from day. You would not like it. You don't belong there yet. Oh. Oh. 
No, I'm not a drawing room flop, if that's what you mean. I'm not an aristocrat with a castle on the Rhine or a villa on the Riviera. I suppose that's the kind of life you're talking about. Oh, Louis, these things don't matter to me. Money, wealth, position, they are dust. Believe me, I know. Well, then what is it, Marie? What is it? I want to ask you a question. One question. Will you answer me honestly? Yes. Yes, of course. If you had to choose between me and your music, which would you choose? Well, why? Why must I choose? This is a beginning, too, Marie. My music, since I've met you, has is, is come alive. I'm just beginning to... write. You have not answered my question. Stop talking in riddles, Marie. Stop torturing me. Why not? Why not? Is it because I'm a commoner and you're a countess? Does blood really matter to you? If it does, then recognize the real blood and not the pale stuff which is called royal. I have told you over and over again. That is not the reason. Oh, why don't you believe me? What am I to believe, Marie? You tell me that you love me and then you run like a frightened fawn whenever I approach you. I know that I'm not beautiful, but I am not an ogre. You are beautiful. Your music is beautiful. My music? So that is it. All this time it has only been my music that has ruffled your heart. Yes, it is your music, and your music is you. Are they separable? I gave my heart to you the first time I heard your music, and no one else has had it. If I could, if I were able, I would go with you now, wherever you desired, anywhere. If you could, if you were able, why can't you? You are free, you're alone, there is no one to prevent you. No one. But still, I cannot. I have not wanted to tell you because I, I don't want you to be sad. I am not one of your court gentlemen to be played with. Tell me what it is, Marie. Promise you will not weep, nor beat your breast or curse heaven. Promise you, you will be the same after I tell you. Anything, anything, only tell me, Marie. Yesterday, the court physicians attended me, all of them. You would have thought I was the queen. But Mama insisted, and they told her. But I already knew. What did they tell her? In heaven's name, what? That I have not many weeks left in my life. It, it cannot be. No, no, no. Remember, you promised. This. This will not be the end, Marie. Not for us. I will not allow it. This was only an interlude. I will follow you. I will find you. You will? Yes, Marie. I will. Here, Marie, this is for you, a trio I finished this morning. For me? How lovely. But I want to hear it. Now, I, I must hear it before. What do you call it? It has no name. Only Opus 70. Why don't you call it the ghost trio? <laughs> He forgot me, and so will you. That is the way of love. In life and after, there is a brief togetherness, and then the long loneliness. No. No, it's not like that, Marie. Not when you have it. 
Oh, it is illusion, Liebchen. Only the illusion of love. No. I must go back to my own country alone. Not alone. I'm going with you. No, I cannot let you. But I want to go, Marie. Do you realize that if you come with me, you cannot take the music you might have written? If I can't have you, there will be no music. <laughs> about him. I should never have let him go. You couldn't have stopped him, Liz. You know how Lewis is when he makes up his mind to something like wild horses can't stop him. After all, Liz, he's not a child. Oh, but he is a child. He doesn't even know when he's ill. I'm going to call him. You'd better wait till morning. It's late now. He's probably asleep. No, I'm going to call him. I'm too upset about it. Beethoven did dedicate his ghost trio to Marie von Erdode. Perhaps when the music is played, it still calls forth her spirit. to the haunted mansion. I hope you enjoyed tonight's films. We'll see you next Friday and Saturday at midnight on Shock Presents. <laughs>